Coming up in this week's video, we have the world's first skateboarding game featuring a gun-wielding teddy bear in a 1980s Miami Vice inspired world. We've also got a Zelda-like adventure featuring a dog with a magic paintbrush and in one of the biggest indie releases of the year so far, we've got a raccoon private eye exploring a missing persons case in a dystopian version of Vancouver. Hi guys and welcome to I Love Indies. Today we are showcasing some of the great indie games released in the second week of June 2021. To keep up to date with all things indie gaming, please subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon to get notifications so you never miss a video. Feel free to comment below on which of the featured indies most interest you, and also don't forget to click the like button if you enjoy the video, as it all helps feed the YouTube algorithm. Getting a surprise release last Saturday during the Gorilla Collective showcase and just missing the deadline for last week's video was Inglet, a game created by Nicholas Nigren, aka Nifless, the man responsible for the Knit series of games and puzzle platformer Ernog. Now I've done my research and can tell you that Inglet is a Scandinavian word meaning to breed or grow and it's often used to refer to tadpoles and fish spawn, and this all seems rather fitting for the plot and characters of this game. You play as a jellyfish creature in search of your amoeba-like friends who've been separated from you after a comet hits your homeland. It's a story without words, told through a beautiful abstract aesthetic. Played from a top-down perspective, Inglet is a platformer without platforms. Well, certainly not in the traditional sense. You move from one floating island to the next and have only a dash move to catapult yourself forward. The goal of each level is to find one of your friends and follow them to the exit, which is easier said than done. Navigating the world requires puzzle solving and precision timing. You quickly learn the different ways you can interact with the environment. You can bounce on blue lines or cut through them, you can reflect yourself off red lines, or jump into what I can only describe as microscopic train stations that send you on a track to certain places. There's even a few hard to reach collectibles in each level, which require exploring off the beaten track, and getting all of these is pretty challenging and adds replay value to the game. The hand-drawn graphics of the game are truly stunning, and the minimalistic art style, along with a living world that reacts and evolves around you, really reminded me of Pixel Junk Eden and Floor. Paired with a superb dynamic soundtrack, Inglet really is a hypnotic experience not to be missed. It's available now on the PC via Steam at a very low price point of around 5 US dollars or 5 UK pounds. Labelled by the developers as the world's first skate boating game, Wavebreak originally released on Google Stadia as a timed exclusive last year. This week, it makes its way to Steam and the Nintendo Switch. In the game, you play as a teddy bear known as Big Pin, a criminal mastermind wanted for murder, embezzlement and honey theft. Equipped with a gun and speedboat, you surf the cool waters, complete tasks and evade the detective on your case. Gameplay feels like a mix of Tony Hawk's Pro Skater and Nintendo's Wave Race. All of the typical skateboarding tricks are present and correct, albeit with added water. You can pull off death-defying combos featuring 360s, kick flips, air grabs, rail grinds and more through perfectly timed button sequences. Plus, you've got a gun, something Tony Hawk's never had. All of this is wrapped up in a super colourful 1980s inspired Miami Vice setting. The single player campaign features a variety of sandbox levels, from frozen tundras to tropical beaches. There's also multiplayer modes for online ranked matches, or matches against friends, a time attack mode, a park creator, hundreds of customizable options, and a wonderful synthwave soundtrack recorded especially for the game, featuring artists such as Timecot1983 and Kallax. All in all, Wavebreak is an innovative take on the skateboarding genre, made all the better by the retro aesthetic, the gun-wielding furry characters and that nostalgic music. It's perfect for quick runs and definitely one to get you in the mood for summer. With action roguelites getting released every week, it's often hard to know which to play, but let me start by saying Blade Assault, even in its early access state, is well worth your time and your money. You play as Kill, part of a resistance group fighting corruption in the dystopian world of Esperanza. The game features a similar cyberpunk pixel art style as Neon Abyss, with a combat system much more reminiscent of Skull of the Hero Slayer. It's a 2D side scroller that starts off in a hub world with shops, a bar and plenty of NPCs. Once you've equipped your loadout, you enter the fray. The early access build includes four different worlds, each with a boss. These worlds are broken up into a series of short levels featuring waves of enemies. 
combat is super slick and by far the strongest draw of this game. You have a hack and slash close quarters attack, a special move and a projectile attack. One unique feature is the inclusion of an enemy aggression meter. A high level means tougher enemies. If you want you can spend your in-game currency to lower aggression but it's expensive and comes at the cost of other enhancements. After a run coins you've collected can be spent upgrading your character through a skill tree system. You can unlock new weapons, upgrade them and even build relationships with some of the hub world locals. This super balance of permanent and non-permanent upgrades makes runs feel different but also purposeful. Despite all the combat options, enemies are a little too similar and lack variety and apart from the cosmetic appearance, levels are largely the same but I'm confident these things will be developed considerably before the game's full release. Blade Assault is a great action roguelite. It's up there with Voidigo and Revita for my best roguelites currently in early access. Check it out now on the PC by way of Steam. After a long time in development and a prologue available on Steam for over a year, Backbone finally makes its way to the PC this week. It's a neo-noir piece of interactive fiction set in a dystopian world of anthropomorphic animals, most of which are up to some form of shady dealings. You take control of Private Eye Howard Lauter, a flawed, lonely raccoon clearly modelled off hard-boiled detectives such as Raymond Chandler's Philip Marlowe. The story begins in typical Chandler-esque fashion. Lauter interviews a distressed wife adamant that her husband is adulterous. And what starts off as a simple case of marital infidelity soon reveals something much more sinister and exposes widespread corruption across the city, covering all strata of life. Based on the strength of the prologue and the first act, it's really easy to see how Backbone became many people's most wanted indie of the year. The script is excellent, totally believable and feels like something from a classic novel. Finding your way into the local club come brothel, The Bite, is an early highlight, with nothing preparing you for what Howard finds in the basement. Backbone's art style is truly wonderful, with the 2.5D pixel art aesthetic breathtaking on a high resolution screen. The level of intricate details given to characters, buildings and backgrounds is impressive, with dynamic lighting, rain effects and volumetric fog further helping to bring the dystopian Vancouver to life. The developers claim Backbone to be the modern evolution in the point and click genre. Howard can be controlled with either a gamepad or a mouse and keyboard, with the former working surprisingly well. Gameplay primarily takes the form of interrogation, with a vast number of memorable characters to interact with. Once in conversation, you're able to choose responses from a list. Your decision can often change the tone and the direction of the dialogue, although sometimes even different responses led to the same outcome, suggesting choice is more illusory than it first appears. In typical point and click fashion, you have an inventory and can pick objects up to give to characters, but primarily the narrative is driven by dialogue choices. You also have a crouch move which allows for some interesting stealth mechanics. You can hide in the shadows or create a distraction to pass foes. It's all rather simple stuff, but it does mix up the gameplay. Rather than having a grandiose 1940s style jazz soundtrack, as you may expect with a noir title like this, the soundtrack's subtle and actually a little underwhelming. It's not always present and sound effects are kept to a minimum, even on busy streets. Like its protagonist, Backbone has its flaws. It's by no means perfect and may disappoint some, yet for me, the script, the beautiful pixel art and the intriguing protagonist make this an easy recommendation. It's out now on Steam, available for free for Xbox Game Pass subscribers on the PC, and it's scheduled to be released on PS4, Xbox and the Nintendo Switch later in the year. Fuzz Force Spook Squad is a roguelike deck builder inspired by Terry Kavanagh's Dicey Dungeons. As a member of the Spook Squad, it's your job to battle ghosts and defeat the Polter Prince. Rather than using cards like Slay the Spire and Monster Train, the turn-based battles are won or lost based on the rolling of dice. You play as one of four animal characters, each with their own battle focus and special skills. You have a gun which you equip with your dice. There are three types of dice, attack, shield and charge. The higher the numbers, the better chance of success. You can also upgrade your dice powered weapons during runs and choose to roll for a bonus die before combat if you wish. You move your character around a map made up of square tiles, which once flipped reveal enemy encounters, random events, shops and more. 
Fuss Boy's Spook Squad is an addictive experience. Like many roguelites, the more you play, the better you get, and the farther you go. Runs are short, making the game perfect for a quick pick up and play. The cel shaded cartoon art style is lovely, and the characters are really charming. After several months in early access, the game finally gets its full release this week on the PC via Steam. If you enjoy a good tabletop board game and fancy ghost busting with dice powered guns, Fuzz Force is highly recommended. I've featured Chicory a couple of times already on this channel, and this week it finally gets released on Steam, the PS4, and also the PS5. And if you're new to the game, well, it's a beautiful top down painting adventure starring a dog with a magic paintbrush. Use the power of art to explore, solve puzzles, help your animal friends, and restore colour to the world. You can draw on anything, manipulate the environment, and in true Zelda fashion, unlock new abilities to help you advance further in Picnic Province. With loads of customisable options, local co-op, and a soundtrack by the same person who composed indie classic Celeste, Chicory really is destined for greatness. Also out this week on Steam and in Early Access is One Hand Clapping. It's a truly original game where your voice is the controller. We've got a 2D platformer here that invites you to sing into your microphone to solve musical puzzles and discover the power of your voice as it changes the world. And don't worry about hitting the wrong notes, which I will do constantly. One Hand Clapping is all about taking risks and learning from your mistakes. If you're as bad a singer as I am, and that's pretty bad, and you want to annoy your other half or friends and family, well, this is definitely the game to boot up. It's out now in Steam Early Access, and it's also available on Google Stadia. And that's it for this week in Indie Gaming. If you've enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the I Love Indies channel, and also hit that like button to help feed the algorithm. I'll leave you with the trailer for Summertime Madness, a puzzle adventure due out on Steam next Thursday. Set in the 1940s, you play as a painter who makes a deal with the devil and ends up trapped in one of his own canvases. If you're a fan of Manifold Garden, The Witness or The Talos Principle, this is definitely a game to wishlist. Check out the link for this one in the description below. Until the next video guys, keep loving indies.